are talking today about the hymn on Christ's Ascension I Now Build. It is number 492 in the Lutheran Service Book, and it is one of five Ascension Day hymns in the hymnal. We are using it as our hymn of the day for Ascension Day 2022, which is tomorrow, Thursday, May 26th. Ascension Day is the day of the church year where we remember and celebrate Jesus' ascension into heaven. Remember, after Jesus rose from the dead on Easter, he had 40 days of earthly ministry left where he would appear to the disciples as the risen Christ, where he would teach them and he would prepare them for the day that he returned to the Father in heaven. We celebrate Ascension Day in the church 40 days after Easter, which reflects the actual historical timeline that is recorded in scripture. Jesus rose from the dead, 40 days later ascended into heaven. There are five Ascension hymns in our hymnal. Four of them are being used in church tomorrow. And I will tell you right now, if you want to sing these hymns, then you better be there because we are not going to sing them pretty much anywhere else for the entire rest of the church year. 492 is the one that we are using as our hymn of the day, and it is written by a man named Ernst Sonneman. Now, if you follow along in your hymnal while we're doing these videos, which you may, I don't, don't know, you will notice that that is not the person who is listed down there as the author of our hymn. It says it was written by Joshua Veglin. Now, why does it say it's Veglin's hymn if Sonneman is the one who wrote the hymn? Well, Sonneman based his hymn on a hymn of the same name by Veglin, a hymn that was a little bit earlier. And so Veglin usually gets the credit because they just say that Sonneman's hymn, which is the one in our hymnal, remember, that Sonneman's hymn is an adaptation. The, the problem with that, however, is that the only thing that is the same between the two hymns is really the first two lines. The entire rest of that text is an original text by German pastor Ernst Sonneman, who lived from 16... 30 to 1670. And because he was a German pastor, it was originally written in German. And we do have the correct information at the bottom of the page for the translation. This is a slightly altered version of the translation that was done for 1941's TLH or the Lutheran hymnal. And this is a short, sweet little hymn. You'll notice it's only like three verses. And the Lutheran Service Book Companion to the Hymns actually sums up the whole thing like really perfectly. So I'm going to read for you the words that are recorded in this huge book. All right. The production more of a faithful pastor than of a skilled poet, this hymn is a rich personal confession of faith in the ascended Christ with a prayer for continued grace to live in such faith. So if we were going to split the hymn into two sections, we could split it into a confession of faith in Christ and then the prayer. Verses 1 and 2 as the confession and verse 3 as the prayer for the grace to continue to live in the faith that was confessed in verses 1 and 2. And while verses 1 and 2 are a personal confession of faith, they are also great for teaching those who don't know about the ascension or those who don't know what the ascension means for the life of a Christian. Just like the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, the Athanasian Creed are confessions of faith that are also super useful for teaching the content of that faith, the confession of faith found in this hymn is super useful for teaching us about ascension. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to read the first verse. On Christ's ascension, I now build the hope of my ascension. This hope alone has always stilled all doubt and apprehension. For where the head is, there as well, I know his members are to dwell when Christ will come and call them. Jesus' ascension, like everything he did, was not for his own sake, but it was for you and for me. We trust that just as Jesus ascended into heaven, we too will go to live with God. In John chapter 14, which we read part of in church last week, Jesus is preparing his disciples for his imminent death and resurrection for he's about to leave them, right? And he does all that whole in a while you'll see and yet a little while more. And anyway, the disciples are confused, but you and I, when we look back on these passages are less confused. There's beautiful promise for us in chapter 14, verse three. Jesus says that he goes to prepare a place for us. And he says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. 
Jesus promises that he goes to prepare a place for us and promises that he, the head, will bring all of us, the members, the fingers, the toes, the elbows, whatever you want to call us, that he will bring all of us along where he goes, that we too will have a place with the Father in heaven. This confession of faith continues in verse 2, and verse 3 is the prayer that Jesus would help us to live out that faith in response to what he's done for us, and that he would keep us in that faith until our last day. And it's a good prayer to end the hymn on. I think it is also a good prayer to end the hymn video with. So let us pray. O oh, grant, dear Lord, this grace to me, recalling your ascension, that I may serve you faithfully in thanks for my redemption. And then, when all my days will cease, let me depart in joy and peace in answer to my pleading. Amen. A good prayer to close out the day with today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something. If you are local, I hope to see you at our service tomorrow night. And if you are not, then you can go ahead and check back here at 7 p.m. Eastern to watch our live stream. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time. Bye.